This is Dave VE3OI and this is an update to my Ionisond uh, project. I've basically taken this as far as I can go and I can't really take this any further. I'm having some issues in terms of the power output of the Ionisond and the uh, antenna I'm using. The noise level at this time of year is just far too high for uh, using uh, an ionosond with output of 5 watts. So for me to take this further it means that I, I'd have to rebuild the transmitter and be potentially putting out hundreds of watts uh, because I'm getting uh, roughly about an S9 um, noise level on the band and uh, I'm just not putting out enough power and my antenna is not configured such that it's uh, radiating directly up to capture uh, Envis. So as in my previous video I'm using a similar setup. I've got my uh, transmitter section here. I've got my first amplification stage and bandpass filter here. I have got my the second amplification stage and mixer here as well as the uh, uh, bandpass filtering and active bandpass filtering here and that's being fed into the uh, DS pick here which is uh, running at uh, uh, 400 kilohertz it's sampling at 400 kilohertz and I'm using an intermediate frequency of um, 100 kilohertz as well I'm, I'm using an SI5351 to generate uh, the oscillator signal for the mixer as well as generate the frequency which is transmitted uh, by the amplifier. The output from the amplifier is being fed to a low pass filter then going to a T connector here where it's uh, going to a 50 ohm terminator here and uh, the other end of the T connector is going to a device I built which I call my reflector and this is simulating the reflected signal from the uh, amplifier Later in the video I'll uh, present a schematic and I'll explain how this device works. But basically it's got a detector circuit which detects the pulse coming in. Then it delays a certain amount of time and it transmits a signal pulse back. So it's as if it's the echo that's coming back from the uh, amplifier. And I've got the Arduino software here that controls precisely the time that uh, the time between the signal it detects and the signal that it transmits. I've got my scope connected, this is channel 1, connected to the transmitted signal. So uh, channel 1 is going to trigger on the signal that's going out and then channel 2 here is uh, connected to the pulse that the reflector is going to generate so that way I can uh, check the timing between the transmitted pulse and the return pulse. I'd like to describe how my Arduino reflector works and uh, once again I'm doing this because I need something to simulate uh, the ionosphere so when the um, ionoson device transmits a, a pulse I need something to actually detect that pulse and then return a signal back as if it's the ionosphere uh, reflecting a signal back. And in my prior videos I have done some calculations and I found that my time budget uh, for a signal to go up to the ionosphere and come back down is roughly about one or two milliseconds. And so I'm trying to uh, do the changeover bet between receive and transmit uh, within one millisecond. So here's uh, the schematic for my reflector. Um, here is my uh, ionoson device which is generating a uh, pulse at uh, 5 watts and uh, that's going into a 50 ohm terminator and the other end is coming into a detector circuit and that uh, detector circuit has a, uh, a high impedance of uh, 1 kilo ohm here being fed into a, uh, a, a rectifier uh, circuit and uh, there's a bleeder a resistor here so that once the pulse uh, uh, completes that uh, this line falls 
uh, uh, fairly quickly. And uh, I've also got a Zener diode here, a 5 volt Zener diode, to protect the um, voltage going here to the Arduino to make sure it never exceeds 5 volts. So this line will be going to the Arduino and the Arduino will uh, generate an interrupt on the rising edge of uh, this pulse and uh, it would introduce a delay to meet this uh, requirement here and uh, uh, it'll turn on the SI5351 to generate a signal coming out. So the second part of the circuit here is what interfaces the uh, SI5351 to the uh, Ionison device. So right here is I've got a 60 dB tap and uh, then I've got another 60 dB uh, pad here that's uh, connected and the reason I do this is to make sure the 5 watts that's being sent when it gets here it's uh, it won't damage the SI5351 so if I look at this I'm generating 5 watts which is about 37 dBm I've got uh, approximately 120 uh, dB of attenuation so which means the signal going to the SI5351 is minus 83 dBm Both the ionosonde and the reflector is controlled via command line interface and I've got two um, console windows open here that's uh, talking to each command line interface. This one is talking to the, I the ionosonde and uh, this is talking to the Arduino. So I'm going to go ahead and generate a test signal and we'll check the timing of it. So the first thing the uh, the ISON is re reporting back, it's telling me some thresholds it's used, it used to detect the signal. Then it's giving me this plot here, which is a plot in time of when it detected the signal. So at this point, this is when the signal um, uh, uh, was gen generated, and a dot represents no signal detected. And you see as we go along in time, we come to a plus which in, indicates it detects the return pulse and it detected it for a certain period of time and that time represents the uh, transmit time which right now I've set it to 500 uh, microseconds so the um, DSPIC measured the transmit time to be actually 505 microseconds and the Arduino measured the time at 508 microseconds. The DSPIC also said the uh, the adjusted time, the time it took between the transmit and receive was approximately 1.1 milliseconds and the Arduino said it's approximately 1.2 milliseconds. So it's off um, a little bit, it's off by 100 microseconds and uh, the height based on that um, time uh, between the transmit and receive it's coming back and it's saying it's a 172,000 meters or 172 uh, kilometers and that would be the height of the the ionosphere right there I've got my scope set up now to trigger and it's going to measure the actual pulse so I'm going to generate another pulse here So right here it's saying that the pulse transmit time was again was about 505 microseconds and it's saying it was 512 microseconds here and here it's saying it was 1.1 uh, millisecond was the return time. So that, that's a time for the pulse to go up and come back down from uh, uh, the ionosphere and uh, the Arduino is saying it's about 1.0 microseconds. So let's go over to the scope and let's uh, see what the scope measured. This is what my scope 
uh, captured the yellow trace here, the bottom trace, that is channel 1. So that's the transmitted signal. And a purple trace here, that's channel 2, which is the signal that's generated by the Arduino. So it's the reflected signal. So uh, uh, if this was uh, actually working in, in, in the real world, this would be the signal that's transmitted up to the uh, ionosphere and then this would be the signal that's reflected back. So if we take a look at the pulse duration here, it's coming back and it's saying it's exactly 500 uh, microseconds. And if I go over and I take a look at the, the time for the reflected signal, it's coming back to about 1.0 uh, milliseconds, which is exactly what the Arduino uh, 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 predicted. So the um, Inison software is off a little bit but uh, it's pretty darn close. I've taken this project as far as I can go um, and uh, what I found is that the noise levels um, on the band here is it's so strong. I've got an S9 signal and I'm only putting out 5 watts and uh, the problem is I don't have enough power uh, to put out that's being reflected back that's going to punch through that S9 noise. So to make this work I would have to uh, transmit a lot more power and as well I'd have to have a lot uh, better antenna system which is going to radiate signals more vertically. The other problem I'm having is the actual a maximum usable frequency is below the uh, 40 meter band. So for example here is a actual ionosond and uh, you can see here the cutoff frequency is about uh, six and a half megahertz. Actually it's down more so down around six five or six megahertz is where uh, the uh, cutoff frequency is. So I am probing at uh, 7 megahertz which there would be absolutely zero uh, reflected signal coming back. So which means I would have to go down to potentially the uh, 70, 80 or the 160 meter band to get a reflected signal back and the noise level in those bands in my area is even worse than at the, uh, the uh, 40 meter band. So anyway, that concludes my video. I hope this was informative and thanks for watching.